All right, ladies and gents, welcome back. Radius and interval of convergence number two. So we're going to take what we did in our last section, and we're going to now expound upon that uh, with a couple other things. So <clears throat> what we want to do now is we want to find the interval and radius of convergence for um, power series, obviously, but we either want to find the derivatives of f, we want to find the integral of f along with maybe the original f function. And um, so here's some rules for that. So in order to find the derivative or integral of a power series, you can derive or integrate with respect to x using respective rules, okay, respective power rules. For each derivative and antiderivative of a power series, the radius and interval of convergence will remain the same, meaning that for every derivative and for every integral of f, the values of the interval, okay, so if it's negative 2 to 2 or negative 3 to negative 1, whatever those numbers are, are going to be the same for every integral or derivative. The only thing that will change is depending upon the endpoints, okay, but here's the only thing that actually is pretty easy to understand. So whenever you're integrating, whenever you're integrating, there are going to be brackets, okay, they're going to be closed brackets. Whenever you're taking the derivative, you're always going to be parentheses. The only thing that might change is with the original function f. Okay, and that's where we have to test the, um, uh, the what's it called, the, like, your different tests, right? We have to use different tests, when P-series or alternating um, series and stuff like that, to determine if they're closed or open. Okay, but whenever you're differentiating, no matter what, the parentheses are going to remain. So they're always going to be open for differentiating, closed for integrating. All right, let's go. Let's go. Let's go, 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 go. Remember, ratio test. Okay, we got the limit as n approaches infinity, the absolute value of the n plus 1, right? So it's negative 1 to the n plus 1. Uh, times x to the n plus 1 plus 1, so this is n plus 2, over n plus 1 plus 1, which is n plus 2, times now you flip them over, right? So it's negative 1 to the n plus 1. Uh, it's um, x to the n plus 1, and then n plus 1 up here. Now remember, okay, that if it's its absolute value, the negatives, right, these don't matter, okay? So those don't matter. Um, we end up with... The limit as n approaches infinity, the absolute value. This is x to the n plus 2, and this is x to the n plus 1. So that's going to disappear, and this is just going to be an x. So I have x times n plus 1 over n plus 2. Okay? Now this, again, goes to infinity over infinity, but because we're approaching infinity with our n values, we know this is going to be the absolute value of x over 1, or just the absolute value of x which has to be less than 1, thus x is less than 1 but greater than negative 1. So these are the two values, negative 1 and 1. I have to determine now if I am going to have a closed, open, or anything like that. Okay, <clears throat> So let's figure this out. All right, I have, uh, let's do f of x first. Okay, So let's do f of x. So we're going to let x equal negative 1 first. We're going to plug it into our uh, summation here, our series here. Uh, infinity, we're going to get uh, negative 1 to the n times negative 1 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. Okay, this is going to be equal to just basically negative 1 over um, n plus 1. Okay, um, because again, we did that before, but negative 1 to the n and negative 1 to the n becomes negative 1 to the 2n, which becomes positive. So the only thing that's left is negative 1 over n plus 1. Oh, I'm sorry, this is the summation. Sorry, I forgot the, the summation here. So n equals 0 to infinity over 1, uh, negative 1 over n plus 1. We know that from the, one of the last examples on the previous um, um, video, but also um, in the p-series test, this is going to diverge because of the p-series, okay, it's going to diverge, uh, and then so I want to let x equals 1, okay, x equals positive 1, and boom, 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 n equals 0 to infinity, 
we get negative 1 to the n times 1 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. This right doesn't matter, so I get I get n equals 0. That's a terrible summation uh, of negative 1 to the n right over n plus 1. This is going to converge because of the alternating series. Okay, so this is going to converge. So that means that our f of x, okay, our interval of convergence for f of x is going to be negative 1 to 1, but 1 is going to be closed. Okay, because it converges at 1, diverges at negative 1. Okay, now we got to do the same for um, all of these, right? f prime, f double prime, and the integral of f of x. So let me um, get rid of some of the stuff. Okay, I'm going to leave that. I'll get rid of this down here. Okay. Fantastic. Actually, I don't even need this, so we're going to get rid of this too. We'll get rid of that. Okay. So now I take the derivative. f of x, okay, is equal to... Boom, 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 boom. And equals zero. And I'm going to take the derivative of this with respect to x. So all of the n stuff is going to stay the same. Those are going to be like constants. Okay, so this is going to be negative 1 to the n. When I take this power, it's going to be n plus 1 to the x. And then remember, I subtract 1. So n, minus, n plus 1 minus 1 is just, um, I'm sorry, n plus 1 times x to the, n plus 1 minus 1 was just x to the n over n plus 1. Okay, well those are going to cancel, so I'm left with n equals 0 to infinity. I'm left with negative 1 to the n times x to the n. Okay, now what? Well, let's see here. Oh yeah, i got to move some stuff, sorry. So, what's going to happen? Well, we got to make sure that those values, okay, are going to do what they got to do, okay? We just make sure. We still got to check them, even though, um, right, differentiating the parentheses remains. So it is going to be from negative 1 to 1. But let's let x equals positive 1 um, just to make sure. So when this means parentheses remain, okay, you are going to have parentheses in differentiation, but you have to check, so let me, let me back up a little bit. Okay, so in f of x, we had it was negative 1 to 1. Okay, negative 1 to 1. So what does that mean? That means that because this is a parenthesis here, that means that f prime of x is also going to have a parenthesis on the negative 1. We have to check the closed bracket. Okay, we have to check the closed bracket. So that's why x is equal to positive 1 there. So um, let's do that. Let's plug that in. Okay, we get um, the summation from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times 1 to the n. So this here is going to diverge of because of the nth term test okay because of the nth term because if you think about it what's going to happen this is always going to alternate right this is going to be positive or negative positive or negative positive or negative no matter what so it's going to be plus one minus one plus one minus one plus one minus one so it's never going to be um, converging to anything okay and so because that's going to diverge the derivative the interval is going to be negative one is always going to be open and then this one is now going to be diverging okay because it is diverging because of the nth term. All right, so that's the first derivative. Now let's do the second derivative. So let me get rid of this. Let's do the double derivative. So if this is the first derivative here, that means the second derivative is going to be n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times n times x to the n minus 1. Okay, and now, because the first derivative is now going to be open on that 1, that means the second derivative is now also going to be open on that 1. 
okay? If this was closed, then you would have to test that as well. Uh, it's open, so now that's going to remain open. So that's the double derivative. That's the interval of convergence for the double derivative. Okay, now what we have to do is we have to do the integral of f of x. So let me erase all of this now. And this is, actually, let me just erase it all. Let's do that. Okay, so what I got to do is I got to use the integral of f of x dx. Okay, well, that's equal to uh, the summation from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n x to the n plus 2 over uh, n plus 1 plus n and n plus 2. And you might be like, well, why is that? Why is that true? Okay, well, this integral actually turns into the summation. We want to actually integrate, okay, everything with respect to x, right? So if I'm integrating with this x piece, I'm adding 1 to the power, which is n plus 2, and I'm dividing by that same power. Okay, so and remember, everything that's not in x or not with an x doesn't matter. That's just a constant. Okay, so this is what I get here. And so now <clears throat> I have to look at the integrating pieces. Okay, so I know that f of x, right, our interval was negative 1 to 1 okay because this is a bracket on 1 that means our integral of f of x dx is going to equal not equal I don't know why I'm using equals let's use uh, let's use a colon because it doesn't actually equal that it's a colon that's where we do that okay so this 1 is a closed bracket so we're gonna say that's still a 1 I have to see if this negative 1 is going to converge with the f of x. If it converges, then it's going to be closed. If it diverges, then it will still remain open. Okay, so i got to test that out. So I'm going to let x equals negative 1 for this summation here. n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times negative 1 to the n plus 2 over, uh, I'm going to multiply this out, okay, so that's n squared plus 3n plus 2. Um, now what? Well, let's see. So this is going to be negative 1 to the 2n and then negative 1 to the 2. Oops, to the 2. So this is positive, that's positive, so we're going to get a positive 1 up top. So n equals 0 to infinity of 1 over n squared plus 3n plus 2. This here is going to converge. Okay, because if I think about this, like my numerator is going to remain at 1, but my denominator, right, is going to approach 0. So it's going to converge because of the p-series test. Right, n squared is, you know, the 2 is bigger than 1 right on the p-series and that's why it's going to converge therefore it converges that means my interval is going to be from negative 1 to 1 but both of them are going to be closed all right negative 1 to 1 both of those are going to be closed because the negative 1 inside the integral piece is going to converge and therefore negative 1 to 1 closed interval okay let's go to example number two Alright, let's do it. Let's finish this sucker up. Okay, so we're centered here at x equals 2. I'm not sure if it matters. It might. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, centered at 2. Alright, because of that x minus 2 there. Okay, so let's find all of this stuff. The limit as n approaches infinity, right, of the absolute value of n plus 1. So this is negative 1 to the n plus 1 plus 2, so that's n plus 3, times x minus 2 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1, times now the reciprocal, so n over negative 1 to the n plus 2, times x minus 2 to the n, absolute value. Now again, the negatives don't matter, so I guess if you wanted to, to not do those when you do this, that's fine, 
right? Those don't matter because, again, there's absolute value, so it doesn't matter uh, in the long run. Okay, so this is the same as saying limit as n approaches infinity at the absolute value. Um, <clears throat> this is going to cancel, and this is going to be one left, right? So this is n times x minus 2 over n plus 1. Now, again, we can use the horizontal asymptote rule. So this is going to actually be the absolute value of x minus 2, which has to be less than 1. So thus, x minus 2 is less than 1 but greater than negative 1. So my values are going to be 1 less than x, which is less than 3. So this here is going to be uh, my interval, right? So I have 1 and 3. Now I have to test if it's open or closed and do all that same stuff that I had to do in the last video and I had to do in the last problem. Okay, so let's get to it. All right, so I'm going to let x equals 1 for the... Um, the first function, the, the original function, right, f of x. So I get n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n plus 2 times 1 minus 2 is just negative 1, right, to the n over n. Okay, so what's going to happen here? Um, it looks like this is just going to be positive 1. Okay, so this is going to be... Uh, n equals 0 to infinity of 1 over n. And remember p-series, in order for it to converge, this is the p right here. p has to be greater than 1. Okay, if p is equal to 1, that means it diverges. So this is going to diverge because of the p-series. Okay, so that means it's going to start at, uh, f of x is going to be at, starting at, uh, what are my values? 1, comma, we, and 1 is not included, right? So now i got to let x equals 3. Okay, again, now do this math here. n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n plus 2 times 3 minus 2 is now 1 to the n over n. Okay, this is going to be, um, let's see here. This is, oh, this doesn't matter. 1 to the n doesn't matter. That's positive always. So I'm going to get negative 1 to the n plus 2 over n. This is going to converge by alternating series. Okay, so that means that this 3 is going to be included for f of x. Okay, so that means that f prime of x, the 1, because of the parentheses remain, that means 1 is going to still be there. We don't know if this is going to be a closed bracket or if it's going to be parentheses we don't know yet f double prime we know it's the same one comma three but we don't know if it's closed or open and then uh, the integral okay the integral of f of x dx we know this one is going to be one comma three but the three is going to be remain in the bracket we don't know about the one yet so we got to test all of that stuff okay so let's get to the rest of it Erasing, 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 erasing my life away, erasing. Okay, um, <clears throat> so let's do f prime. So I got to find the derivative. Okay, I got to find the derivative is going to be n equals 0 to infinity. So I got negative 1 to the n plus 2. Uh, the derivative of this, right, is really chain rule. So it's going to be times n times x minus 2 to the n minus 1 times 1, but I don't need about that. I care about that 1 over n. n's are going to cancel. So this is equal to n equals 0 to infinity uh, of negative 1 to the n plus 2, sorry, times <clears throat> x minus 2 to the n minus 1. Oh, man. All right, so uh, if I plug... Okay, um, x equals 3. So, right, if I let x equals 3 in there, n equals 0 to infinity, and I get negative 1 to the n plus 2, and then x equals 3, so 3 minus 1 is 1. 1 to the n minus 1 doesn't matter, it's just 1. So, this is going to be right here, and this is going to diverge because of the nth 
term test or go to the nth term because this no matter what is going to alternate between positive one negative one positive one negative one positive one negative one and therefore it's never going to converge so this three on f prime is going to be open right and therefore because that's open okay on the f prime that means f double prime is also going to be open okay now I gotta find out for the integral if one is going to be open or closed. So now let's find a derivative, or the, I'm sorry, the derivative, the integral, f of x dx, okay, is going to be n equals zero to infinity. So now take the derivative of all of the, or the, I'm sorry, the antiderivative, but anything with x's, right? So that's gonna be negative one to the n plus two is gonna remain. This is x minus two to the n, so if you need to do u substitution to figure out what that is but really because the x value there's no coefficient other than one then I'm not really doing anything different okay um, but if you need to use substitution you can but it's just x minus 2 to the n minus 1 um, I'm sorry we got to add one right not subtract so it's plus 1 divided by n times n plus 1 right so um, what do I do now I got to plug in x equals 1 Right, so let x equals 1. When I do that, n equals 0 to infinity, I get negative 1 to the n plus 2. 1 minus 2 is negative 1 to the n plus 1 over n times n plus 1. Now let's see what we can do here. Um, so this is n squared plus n. Okay, n squared plus n. The numerator... Um, let's see here. I got negative 1 to the n times negative 1 to the 2 times negative 1 to the n times negative 1 to the 1. So that's how I can break up the numerator. Negative 1 to the 2, that's positive. This and this combine together to make positive. So the numerator is just negative 1. The numerator is just going to be negative 1. Okay. Well now... We know because if I can use um, kind of a p-series on this, right, this is similar to just n squared, n squared is going to be close to 0, right? It's going to then approach 0 because the p-value is greater than 1, which is 2, and thus this is going to converge by the p-series, okay? So that means that x equals 1 is going to converge in the integral, therefore the interval of convergence here is going to be closed is going to be closed for the for the uh, antiderivative or the integral of f of x dx okay that is how you can use the radius and inter interval of convergences for f f prime f double prime and the antiderivative of f all right deuces on to the next one